You hear that? Yep, you hear nothing. Because this is a 2019 Volvo XC90 T8 all-wheel drive, and it is a plug-in hybrid. As such, you get green Ontario plates on this flagship Volvo SUV, which means you can take the HOV lanes all by yourself. So that's the first perk. The second perk, of course, is that it's a Volvo and it's very safe. So if this car is intended for you and your family, well, it's, it's pretty much a tank. It is loaded with every single feature for safety you can imagine, and it did really well in the IIHS crash test, so it is as safe as a car can be. This T8 all-wheel drive model starts at 84,100 Canadian dollars, but as tested, this inscription trim level with a few extra features is 98,850, which makes it just this much shy of $100,000. You do get a lot of car for your money though. The exterior is definitely different and the alternative to the German competition. It looks very nice, curb appeal is phenomenal, and people actually point at it as you drive down the road. The interior is also something to write home about. The build quality is way above average. It's really, really up there, it's top notch. The materials used are really high grade, fit and finish is very tight, and ergonomically, Volvo has done everything they could to minimize clutter. As a result, they've gone with this horizontal screen that's home to everything, including infotainment, vehicle operation, settings, blah, blah, blah. For 2019, they've improved it even further. It's now even more responsive. But the thing is that now that we're getting used to competitors having like massive honking screens, this one doesn't look as impressive anymore. You do get a fully digital and kind of customizable instrument cluster, a really nice Swarovski crystal shifter knob for the gearbox, and a nice little quilted button for the drive modes, which you can use to select between constant all-wheel drive, pure for eco driving, hybrid for everyday use, power for sporty driving, and off-road for something you will never really do in this car. The seats are one of the nicest and most comfortable seats around. Like seriously, they just touch every spot of your back and they're like really good. Roominess up here is really adequate. I mean, it's not the largest car, but I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd have to be crazy to complain. This is a very nice cabin to be in. Passengers in the rear, however, will complain a little bit because in terms of leg room, this XC90 is not the most spacious in the category. There's also a third row for passengers, but that one is really just for kids. Adults will have a really hard time squeezing in there and staying there. You can stow away the third row and use the car as you'd really like it to be, which is with a massive trunk. It has a 1,183 liter trunk. Ha, <laughs> beat that. When equipped with air suspension, you even get a button in the trunk that you can on demand lower the car to load it or unload it easier. However, the air suspension is not the best option on this car. Like this, without it, it's actually better. Speaking of suspension, Volvo has gone with an integral link axle thing with leaf springs in the back, which on paper sounds like a really horrible thing to do. I mean, why would you ever do that? However, they have designed it quite well. It saves a lot of room, so that's why the trunk can be that big. And to be honest, since this is not a really sporty SUV, so you're not gonna be really taking corners at a thousand kilometers an hour, it doesn't really matter. It really goes unnoticed. In terms of ride comfort, I have to say that the fixed rate dampers on this car work really well. You really don't need the air suspension. Save your money on that. Uh, the air suspension cars ride a little bit firmer than this, believe it or not. So go with a regular suspension. It's completely fine. It soaks up the bumps with uh, pretty good charisma. It's, it's a nice suspension setup. It's not too firm, it's not too soft. It is more comfortable than sporty, but that's what the whole car is anyway. The cabin is very well insulated, so this is generally a serene and very quiet cabin. It is luxurious. It's, it's a very nice place to be. However, when you put the car into power mode, which means, okay, no more hybrid stuff, give me some power. The four cylinder does get a little bit loud, it has a little tiny whine to it, so that's a little bit entertaining, but it's not the best sounding motor in the world. And it, it kind of 
contradicts the whole thing of the car. I mean, it's much nicer when it's quiet. In power mode, the steering firms up a little bit, and then it's, it's nice that the car is not too big because it kind of feels like it could be sporty. So as long as your steering angle isn't too sharp, so you're not asking too much of the car, it does feel nice to drive. I mean, it, it, it points with adequate precision. If you do drive it harder though, and you try to throw it into corners, it will lean and it will definitely tell you that I'm unhappy doing this. Can you please slow down? Think about your family in the back seat, which I'm protecting so well. Don't be dumb. So handling, it's good. It's sure-footed, it's able, but it doesn't really like doing that kind of stuff. So handling, sportiness, not here. An option you should definitely go for though is this Bowers and Wilkins sound system. It's not the loudest sound system in the world, but it's definitely the cleanest. So if you have good elegant taste in music and you don't just listen to like thumping beats all day long, you're really gonna appreciate this sound system. At this point, you might ask yourself, why should I spend $100,000 and be stuck with a four cylinder engine? Well, there are a couple of advantages. One, it's not that slow. The unit makes 400 combined horsepower and 470 combined torques. So that means that this car can hit 100 kilometers an hour in a claimed 5.3 seconds. We tested it at about 5.8. So it's not slow whatsoever. The big advantage though is not performance, it's fuel economy. We've been driving this mostly in the city for the past week and we're still at 11 liters per 100 kilometers. Once you hit the highway, that goes down to eight. So for a vehicle as big as this and as powerful as this, that fuel economy is stupid. So let's break it down a little bit. The 2.0 liter four cylinder engine makes 313 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. However, that's combined with an assistant powertrain, which is of course electric. That is powered by a 9.2 kilowatt hour battery and can do up to 14 miles or 22 kilometers, I've been doing 28, strictly on battery power alone. The electric part of the drivetrain makes 87 horsepower and 177 pound-feet of torque. This thing might not be designed to go off-road, but being an SUV, it means you can tow up to 5,000 pounds. And who doesn't want to tow stuff when they buy an SUV? The only complaint is that power doesn't come on very linearly because you initially get an instant surge of power from the electric motor and then it takes a little while for the gas power to, to kick in. So you get like a two-stage power surge, it's like, oh, oh. so it's, it gets a little bit of getting used to. So versus, let's say, a competitor with a turbo six-cylinder, this doesn't feel as powerful all the time. Another complaint is the brake pedal. The brakes work quite well, it, they're not bad at all. However, in case of an emergency stop or when we tested the 100 to zero, the pedal went all the way to the floor. I don't know why, but it's just the pedal disappeared. It's like whoosh, right in the space. To summarize the Volvo XC90 T8 all-wheel drive plug-in hybrid, I have to say that first of all, that's a pretty long name. Second. In terms of room, this is not the roominess, like the rear seats, that's kind of where it lacks a little bit. And the other striking area that it lacks is connectivity features. I mean, it has all the technology in the world with a screen and driving assistance and everything, but first of all, there's no wireless charging for my phone, boo. Like, what am I gonna do with it? Why not? Secondly, there's nothing for the passengers in the rear. They just get a 12 volt plug from like 1970. That's it, no USB ports, no nothing. And there are only two USB ports in this car and they're nicely tucked in under here. So they're not very available and accessible. Other than that, the Volvo XC90 is a very well-rounded SUV, very safe, very good looking, and a very real alternative to the German competition. So if you wanna stand out, you want something different, which is what Volvo always does, the Volvo XC90 is one hell of a good car. Overall score, 8.5 out of 10. Perfect.